guys. So we talked about kind of who we are, what we're doing. Uh, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's get into the build. So we're gonna, there's a lot of different aspects to this build, but where we're gonna start is with the meat and potatoes, man. We're gonna dive right into the trunk build. So back here, as we can see, uh, we have ample space to work with back here. It's gonna be the home for our three new Arc Audio 12s. Uh, let's kind of show you around here, show you what we're gonna get into specifically. So what we're looking at here is, again, in the beginning, you saw we were disassembling, getting some stuff out of our way from the previous system. But essentially what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna come down the side panels here and we're gonna rebuild some cabinets on the side there just cosmetically to trim the trunk out. We're gonna come down both. It's gonna run down our side here, which is gonna give us a little armrest area, cup holder for the rear passengers there. But across the back here, uh, we're gonna build a, a vented enclosure. It's gonna house three Arc Audio 12s. We're looking roughly six cubic foot, so about two cube per woofer. And we're gonna tune about 35 Hertz. Um, if we come over here, see, we've already started to model some stuff. So, let's see what we got here. So, okay, so this is not what we want. So this is our rear airport, our rear port air velocity. Uh, we use that measurement just to try to make sure our port doesn't chuff, but let's kind of see what we're looking at here. So this is our response, um, anticipated response. Basically what we're looking at here is there's a couple things we look for when we model a subwoofer. We want a decent little bump in the bottom end, nothing too aggressive, but something that we know is going to just kind of create a little fun in the bottom end. And then uh, we want a good frequency range, you know, so this one plays up. We're at our zero. Let's see. On the top end here, it plays up plenty high. At the peak, it looks like we're peaking roughly about 5 dB, around 42 hertz. And then we have an F3 of about 27.9, which still keeps us pretty decently above the FS on this driver. Uh, FS on these 12s, which is the free air resonance, I think it keeps us around 22 hertz, so they play real low, but these are super musical, lots of output, and again, we're running lots of power on them here, so we're running uh, the 2500 from ARC, so ample power. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the wood shop there, take some super fast YouTube mode, get some wood cut, and we're gonna start designing this enclosure. So come on. ourselves all set up in the wood shop out here. We're gonna get some wood cut, so we're going into super fast YouTube mode and we're gonna build us a box. So let's get this running. So according to super fast YouTube mode, that was the quickest box of all time. Um, there's a couple things we're going to measure out right now. We got um, our baffles. We're going to do two of them, so we're an inch and a half thick on the front there. We have the back cut, top, bottom, sides. What we're going to do now is we're going to draw out our port. Um, port's pretty long, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our inside cut. That's our side. So our inside, inside, we're going to draw our port out, and then we'll be able to cut the rest of the port dimensions. So back to super fast YouTube mode.
you guys up a little bit. So I know that was a little bit of super fast YouTube mode. Um, let's kind of show you what we got here. So basically what we're looking at, I drew this out so you guys can kind of see where we're at. So this is the bottom of our enclosure. Um, basically what we have, it's hard to see. We left ourselves a four inch gap over here just because we're going to be rolling this into the side panel. So there's going to be a trim in front of it. So we left a little room to play with. But essentially we have woofer one. This is where one of our window braces is going to go. We have woofer two, one of our window braces, window three. So we got that all drawn out. Uh, these here, let's see if we can show you these. Pardon my going crazy chicken scratch on here, but essentially what we have here, so this is our port. We measure, it's a three and a quarter inch tall port. Uh, so what we do is we just dot the line. When we measure the port, we're measuring the middle of the port. So we measure the middle to the halfway point back here. Then we measure the rest of our distance to the halfway point here. Plus we are gonna have an inch and a half baffle on this because we're gonna countersink the woofers. So we allotted for all that, so that's good. Um, inside of this area here, we're gonna have these guys. Uh, these are gonna be our window braces. So again, there's a lot of lines on here, but basically everywhere you see an X, we're gonna go ahead and cut out. What that's gonna do is it's gonna provide a little more structure to the enclosure. Uh, basically it supports all four walls in the box. Uh, when we're supporting the walls in the box, we're getting more low base. So pretty much cut and dry. So we do have, see, we also got these guys. Uh, these are going to go get trimmed right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into super fast YouTube mode. We're basically going to put our port together. Uh, then we're going to, after we put it together, we're going to rough cut this with a jigsaw. Uh, we're going to router that clean, do some radius work on these. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and move over to the CNC. We're gonna draw our files up real quick and do some cutting on the CNC. So wanted to take a quick second just to catch up on where we were. Bunch of crazy stuff on wood. So uh, let's go ahead and keep rolling. So we got the port built. We got, you watched that previously, we got all of our stuff cut. We're over here at the CNC right now. 
We drew our files up in our draw program. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a little time warp, get some material set up on the CNC. Uh, we're gonna cut our baffle, our braces, cut our second baffle, cut, 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 build, 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 and then uh, hopefully at that point, we'll be able to go ahead and start putting this box together. Um, so let's go ahead and go into the time warp.
seal in the box right now I did kind of jump ahead just a little bit I got some of the box put together while Megs was cutting these so I'm gonna go clean this one up we're getting some seal on the box and uh, yeah we're gonna get keep on rolling so come on along all right so we're gonna get moved over here we're doing a little tandem action here Megs is getting a seal on the box right now I'm just doing some profiling on the, uh, the front baffle so let's I'll show you when we get there um, let's see what we got cooking here so basically what we got, we got the shell of the enclosure put together. See our window bracing is in here. She's just running some caulk lines in here to make sure the box has a nice perfect seal. Uh, even though it is vented, it's crucially important that it's sealed. So um, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get you set up. Like I said, I'm gonna continue. I've just got some profiling to do on that front baffle. Then we're gonna continue putting this box together, get it laid up in the truck and keep on rolling. guys we're gonna catch you up here let's show you where we left off so we might have done a couple things behind the scenes but let's see so we got the enclosure put together um, baffles on it's in place it's centered in there which is what we needed so the next step in our trunk build is we're gonna start the floor build here so we're gonna split the floor into two sections we're gonna do one side two side and then I'll just have a seam but this will be the piece that gets permanently affixed I say permanently but it's gonna get affixed to the vehicle and that's going to be our platform so we're going to do that out of we're going to template it out of quarter and then build it out of pvc um, once that's all mounted we're going to go ahead and build our layers up in the floor because there's going to be quite a few of them down there and then we have we have a lot of gear going in there so we have four arc audio amplifiers um we've got a battery going back here lots of cabling dsp yeah lots of goodies so we're gonna build the level build the levels up uh, the floor is basically going to be, I mean, so if we look here, I mean, this is what we're assuming right now, but so we're intending to bury the port underneath the floor just to hide it, make it a little easier to trim out and just things of that. So yeah, we, we got a plan, right? So um, we're going to go in the back. We're going to go into some super fast YouTube mode. We're going to get some templates cut for the floor. We'll probably do the passenger side first. Once the template is cut, we'll transfer that onto some PVC, do the other side rinse and repeat. So uh, let's go ahead and get running and back at it.
you. All right, cool. So uh, we got our template cut for the passenger side, super straightforward. So we are gonna cut this one first, just for the simple fact the driver side, believe it or not, is a little different. So we have that little hump right there where the filler neck goes that we're gonna cut around. Well, I'm pretty sure that's for the filler neck. If anything, we're gonna notch around it. But, um, so yeah, we'll transfer this one onto some PVC real quick and templates. So here we go. So what we got, um, obviously, passenger side is in. We're gonna see how close the driver side is to match. And we do have to do some other work over here. To be honest, it doesn't look like it's gonna be too, too much different. So I think we're gonna be good if we can just go ahead and see. So we just gotta cut around this hump here, which is no big deal. And then um, we're pretty close. I think we're gonna have to open it up just slightly. But we'll go ahead and get some of that going and uh yep right back at it so super fast youtube We have a uh, we got the other side laid in we made some super fancy test stamps we got a uh, these are the vintage three-quarter style amps um, not from arc audio but from me um, so this is where our amplifiers are gonna sit we are using four amps we have our 2500 one our 1206 1206 and our 604 um, at this point what we're gonna go ahead and do is you can kind of see some of my chicken scratch over here but I just kind of brain vomit on these parts and that's how we pull this together. So uh, we're going to cut and stack some pieces to make the sub, I guess the sub floor of our floor. So we're going to build that up on both sides. We're going to go pre-cut a bunch of pieces. Then we're going to get our top piece cut. Man, there's a lot of layers. It's really silly to try to explain this, but it'll all make sense as I'm building it. Trust me. So let's go ahead and go cut some wood and we'll be back at you.
so we lost a little bit of footage. I had a dead battery on the GoPro, but um, here's where we're at. We'll take you inside and show you what we did just a moment ago, but we got the driver's side of the truck all built up. We're doing the passenger side now. So we did incorporate uh, a cutout here. The floor buildup is about four and a quarter inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of this space and we're gonna flush our battery in back here. So let's go into some super fast YouTube mode and we'll go ahead and router, router, router. It's like I wiggle my nose and the parts are done. So let's show you what we got. We got the uh, passenger side all in. So you can see what we did here with the battery, playing with some stuff. But um, so our battery fits gorgeous, uh, putting a slack around it. What we're gonna end up having here is so when we build these side panels up, they're gonna come off of where the enclosure is. We're gonna have a window in the side panels, almost like a factory style access. That's going to give us access to all the fusing for the amplifiers, the fusing for the vehicle. Um, when I say fusing, fusing for the vehicle, we're going to add some lighting and our DSP is going to have its own circuit, you know, so all that traditional blade style fusing will be in the panel and all accessible, labeled the whole nine yards. Uh, what we're working on right now, we did get the, we did get the driver's side mocked up here of the, of the front part of the, the build out here. Got a template for our passenger side, so we're gonna go build these now. Essentially the way this is gonna work is you can kind of start to see it come together here, but we have our shape around the amplifiers. Megan's actually in the office right now. She's drawing the file for the center piece here. The center's gonna flush the amps in, and so that's gonna sit below what is a false floor. We're gonna have some lighting, some bass. All right, so we took a quick minute to come over here and check on Schmegs. She's got the file all drawn. She's cutting out the, uh, the trim panel for the amplifiers. So we take a look, basically all we're doing, 
I'm sorry, I know it's a little loud, but basically we're doing a cutout here, and this cutout is going to just run over. Alrighty. So as you can see in the back here, all right. So this is where um, the top amplifiers sit. Then we have the big 2500 on the bottom here, and so you'll see the window basically, but uh, as that comes together. So there'll be a couple layers. There'll be a couple layers down there in the floor. So we're gonna go ahead uh, get you back over to super fast YouTube mode, and we will go ahead and get that other front trim piece built that we were talking about for the front there, and uh, just keep building some layers. I think we should do one more. We can go ahead and cut that second one, and I think that'll look really cool. It just make it a lot more substantial. We can do a really big radius on it. I think it'll look really cool. And then, um, yeah. So I'm sorry. What we're gonna do? Um, talking to Schmegs. So what we'll do is we'll end up doing a profile on this. I'm not sure what profile we'll do on it yet, but basically this is gonna be kind of the floating piece that trims our amplifiers out. So we're gonna do another layer a half inch here. So that'll give us a little more substance there to do a nice big radius on it. So that way, um, it just looked pretty cool. So, and then we'll do a nice profile on the inside, just something to kind of step down to the amplifiers. And so all this is gonna get covered again. And so when it gets covered again, there's gonna be some lighting and things of that nature. So um, like I said, it should look really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get a second one of those cut and uh, just keep pegging along. I got my second one here. So I've got like, 336,000 more to stack, uh, but after that we should have some really cool shapes. So we'll start to have what looks to be a trunk. So um, yeah, let's get back at it. We got a lot more cutting to do and back to super fast YouTube mode.
Okay, so yeah, let's go catch up where we're at. Uh, we're kind of at a, I would call it a stopping point, but I call it a mental break, right? So it's about where we do some thinking. So what we got, so Schmenk's got the piece in the center all done. Uh, we haven't done any profiling on it yet. And um, we, I think I'm gonna get a 60 degree chamfer for that. I think it's gonna look good if it tapers out real nice, and then we'll taper the inside. We do have an inch to play with, so I think we can make that look pretty cool. Um, maybe a little lost going through this, not me, but um, looking at it, what we're gonna end up doing at this point is so, we do have some sides that are gonna come off here. I'll grab a pencil and show you. So basically, we're gonna come off of the side of the enclosure here. We're gonna come down, and then it's gonna hook back in here. So something along So we're gonna come roll down into the side here so that way it all opens up real nice. Um, after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a floor section that trims all this out that's gonna come out probably just over this. So the benefit of coming just over this is, all right, so where it got tricky is um, we're burying our port. Okay, so when we bury our port, the most important thing is we can't choke the port and we don't wanna extend it. So what we're doing is we're keeping the flow of the port unobstructed by raising the amps up, getting that piece floating in the center, but keeping all this space around the outside keeps us having airflow for the port. So it's not choking it off, anything like that. And so what we'll end up doing is this floor piece will come out and trim just over this. So that way it hides all of our cabling uh, because obviously the cabling has to make it to the center here and it's coming from the battery. And then signal processor is gonna go over here. We have a PS8 going in from ARC. Uh, so that will hide all of our cabling underneath here and once our cabling's all hidden again We still don't want to want to we don't want to obstruct the port. So uh, What it'll do is it'll still give us some breathability and we should be able to still plug up a, a floor on top of it with some carpet So if we wanted to go ahead and load something in here, I mean, you know, it, it is a carry-all right? So um, we'll keep those options available, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there as well We're not exactly sure where we're gonna go yet. So a lot of this we come in with a plan and it's a little trial and error, but for the most part, the plan comes together. So outside of that, I think we are gonna wrap it up for right now. Um, obviously there's more to this video, but for tonight, we're gonna take a little break. Uh, we'll come back in here. We'll work on the subfloor and the side panels and our trunk, man, we're, we're coming right along. So you guys stay with us and uh, here's to it. All right, guys, let's catch you up and show you where we're at here. So we got, um... all right. So Schmiggy got our centerpiece cut. Now we still have to do some profiling on it, which is no big deal, we're not sure. I don't know what I wanna do on it for a profile yet. I have some ideas, but I'm just kinda waiting it out. But we're gonna end up doing something on the outside here and something on the inside. Now obviously you see where our amplifiers sit right now. Uh, back pieces are all good. So the next step for us is gonna be to, we're gonna build the sides out here. So basically off the top of the enclosure, they're gonna come down and you kinda see this line I have assumptively here um, we're gonna go ahead and shape that in and we're gonna trim out the battery uh, at the next point of this here with what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and get those side panels built there's gonna be some service accesses because uh, we're gonna need to get to the battery on the driver side so we're gonna put the the isolator over there the fuse distribution for the amplifiers goes over there uh, any additional circuits we run in here like the DSP will have its own circuit uh, some lighting that we're gonna do in here will have its own circuit. So we'll have fusing for that stuff in there as well, but almost kind of like a factory fuse panel, but just again, accessible back there. And of course, obviously access to the battery for whatever reasons. On the driver's side, we're actually gonna have our signal processor from ARC. We have our PS8, so that's gonna go back there. We also have a power supply, so we can hook this thing up to land power if we're showing it. Just plugs into the wall, whole system will play that way. So we might try to get that over on the driver's side, but we're a little up in the air with that one right now. Um, still have quite a few beauty panels to build, so we're just gonna keep trekking along here. We'll get the sides built out. Uh, we'll get an idea what we're gonna do with those, and then we're gonna start working the, the shadow box panel, if you would, or like the beauty panel that's gonna sit in front of the woofers. So basically, in front of the woofers here, we're gonna do a nice little decorative cutout, like a window, uh, just to create some depth there, and then some of our paneling that's gonna cap everything off. All that will kind of roll into that, and then uh, we'll start hiding seams. I mean, we don't we don't really like to see seams, so what we'll end up doing is just doing some trim work over top of them. That's also where we hide har hide hardware, forgive me. Um, I can do cars, I just can't speak. But um, 
So yeah, let's go ahead and get rolling. Uh, again, busy, busy day today, so let's get jamming.
All right, so I showed you what we had here. Sneak a peek. So we got our window cut for around the enclosure. We have our floor pieces cut. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a second to go over to the CNC. We're gonna kind of show you how this tool is a big benefit to us. Uh, this is not the permanent CNC for us. We do have a new one coming, but for right now, this is the one we've been working on and it's been great. I mean, we started with a hobby machine. Now we're ready for a full-size machine and full-size machines on the way. So let's kind of show you real quick what we have going on. So this right here is the file we drew. Uh, this is the window that we're gonna use in the floor as well as around the, the beauty panel for the subwoofers. So we do have our material loaded in here. So basically what we do is we go through, we set all the zeros, let the machine know what material's in there. And then what we're gonna do, let me get you guys set up here. So maybe I'm gonna go here for you. Bear with me one moment here. So I'm gonna draw some quick tool paths. Uh, what the tool paths do is it's basically telling the machine what we want it to cut. So, and we'll do a better video on this so you guys can kind of see some of this process. There's a lot of different softwares you can use. And I mean, we, the one that we're using right now is just a Carbide Create, which is for our Shimoko here. Um, let's go ahead and get this situated. So it lets you choose your bit. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different profile bits. There's loads of goodies you can do with these machines. So machines are a huge help to us today. Um, basically another set of hands when we don't have them available, you know, so it's, they can run in the background, they do what you ask them to do, they don't complain. I mean, so it's, it's really good. So. We do, what's another cool thing is, um, we do hold the material down on the bed there, but um, we do use some tabs that will end up cleaning up after the cut. Uh, the tabs just kind of help keep the parts from falling off, which is really cool. So basically, once the part is cut all the way through, um, it's gonna have some little tabs that just keep it aligned and so it doesn't move everywhere. So, but let's get that situated there. And we're gonna go back and do the outside one here. And bear with us just one moment here. As soon as we start cutting, it'll be a little more exciting, but. Good. What we're going to do is we're going to save our G code here. So we do that. And we're going to come over to our software here. We're going to open the file. about four minutes which pretty cool we're just cutting it out a quarter inch so we're just doing some templating so let's go ahead and get this started here as long as we don't train wreck this <laughs> all right so we're going to i think we're all set up here obviously when we film it is the time that we're going to totally wreck it but let's go ahead and move with it anyway So we're gonna go ahead and let that cut. Uh, as soon as we get that wrapped up, we'll come right back to you guys, kind of show you what we did. It'll make a little more sense what we get to transfer it over to our other pieces, get them all cut out, and then we'll start to see some stuff, you know? So uh, bear with us. We're gonna go into super fast YouTube mode and watch the machine work.
did yesterday. Um, again, it's just a template. So we do go through and we want to verify our shape, see how they're going to look on there. Uh, I like this one. It's basically exactly what we wanted. We just now we need a larger size. So we redo the file this morning, just make it a little bit larger. And uh, so now we're going to run the final on there. Uh, what the final is going to end up being, just again, so you guys know where we're at, that's going to be templates for us to cut the windows for the shower box panel as well as on the floor. And so. Uh, show you the templates we have here. Uh, let's see. All right. So man, the benefit of these tools today, I'll tell you. So here's our template. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, no more having to put a bunch of sticks together. I mean, which is still not a bad method. We did it for years, but um, man, the benefits of this tooling today just really makes it. We're really excited about the new machine we have coming. What's also cool about it is unlike with other stuff, so if we were to hand router these, we would have ended up with the same pieces, but the accuracy in these pieces no longer is the centerpiece waste dust now. You know, so with the centerpiece, what's cool about cutting it out like this is we use a quarter inch bit to cut these. And with the quarter inch bit, it leaves us this center plug just quarter inch smaller. So if we wanted to upsize that, now we have the ability to create a press grill jig. I mean, it's, we have the actual cutout from the whole thing. So there's, there's so many different other aspects of that cutout we can play with, you know? So um, again, just really, really beneficial having those tools today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get these transferred over to our window pieces, like our, our beauty panel and then our floor piece. We're gonna bring those over to the router, open them up, get them all prepped for the inserts. Uh, we'll possibly build the inserts. So we're gonna do quite a bit of super fast YouTube mode right now. But uh, after that, we'll do a, uh, a one-on-one -on -one like this and you guys will start to see some shapes in the floor and the and the beauty panel So let's go ahead and get rolling. We'll get these transferred over and uh, Yes, sir All right, so we got the um, Our templates good For our insert then we went ahead and cleaned this guy up. So what we did The CNC cut this out and when the CNC cuts it again, we use a quarter inch bit. So the quarter inch Take my monster You want to fight? Promotional shit. You can't <laughs> just have joking. labels I'm just out. Joking. All right. Anyway, so when the uh, <laughs> when the CNC cuts it out, you use a quarter inch bit. So it leaves us. If you want to zoom in right here, so it'll leave us with a quarter inch gap right here. Uh, what we do when we take it to the router table is we use a. I'm pretty sure you're gonna call that an upcut bit, but um, but we upsize it is what we do. So basically, instead of closing that gap up a quarter inch to where it's perfect on here, we close it three sixteenths of an inch. That 3 16 gives us material tolerance for our vinyl on both panels. So the gapping, I mean, obviously there's nothing jigging it in place right now, but the gapping is perfect, which is exactly what we wanted. So at this point now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take this template, because again, our insert is good. So we're gonna transfer this onto our beauty panel pieces. Those are the ones that sit in front of the enclosure to show the woofers. And then we're also gonna transfer this in the inverse on the floor to show our floating amp rack in the bottom. Uh, so we're gonna put you back on super fast YouTube mode. We're gonna do some router work. And uh, we'll go ahead and get these panels put together and that way you can see what we got kicking. So stay with us.
So I know that probably seemed like a lot of time lapse, but when it comes to like doing our profiling and all that kind of stuff, it just takes takes a little bit of time. So um, here's where we're at. Let's see. So obviously now we can start to see some shape back here. So we've got our cutout around the amplifier or around the subwoofers. Forgive me. Um, we got all of our inserts done. So our inserts have a really cool little. Let's see if we get in there. Really cool like cove bit on them. We did a very small chamfer on the outside just to step it back. Um, let's see. Then we stepped this piece back to meet it. So you can kind of see a better shot here on the floor. So it steps down there to meet it. It comes down. Then we, again, we got that nice big um, cove bit on there. Just have a really cool step down. You know, a lot of this build back here is a little bulky. And so it being bulky, getting to play with some of the dimension down just kind of help ease the shape a little bit. Um, all in all, I really like it though. So we have um, the top piece. So basically what we did, I'm sorry, I'll start at the beginning. We basically took a shape, right? So the shape we cut on the CNC, we went ahead and we just did a lot of repeating with it, you know? So we did the overall cutout that we had from the CNC. We did our insert on the CNC. Then we took, we flipped it for the floor. We do have these little step-ins here from the piece below, just because that's how the amplifiers trim out. So there'll be some big profiling on that. Um, we do, might do a 60 degree chamfer on it, but we're gonna play with it. I'm still gonna play with some stuff in the floor there as to how the layers work. I mean, I'm not super sure I like what's done down there completely, uh, but that's the beauty of it. We just, we play with it as we go here. Uh, we took this outside shape here, so we didn't just have some blocky cutoff or whatever. I mean, nothing on this vehicle is real squared, but um, I mean, got these huge elongated shapes all over this thing. So it's kind of why we went this way is to create some big profiles. But so this outside cut here that wraps the whole nose is actually this profile here. So we just took and again, you can see where that cuts in and comes with it. So we repeat a lot of the shapes and that's just kind of how we keep more of a themed style installation. On the top, we're gonna do an insert up there just the same. And again, it steps in. So when we do these side panels that come trim out, we're gonna come out here and then I'll actually trim the side out and then our step back here, it's all going to be similar on the top so i know there's um quite a bit going on with it still so hopefully it's a little bit easier to understand at this point so we're just happy with the progress so we're going to keep on rolling um probably have another we have a good little bit of time probably a day or two still in the trunk here getting some loose ends tied up um, we are going to do some badging in the very back so we're going to actually mill that pvc down so that'll be pretty cool uh we've got some of the more cut up shapes for doing the trim back here are still yet to be done. So we're gonna focus on some of that. We just wanted to get the core shapes, core function all set up. So um, we'll go back and yeah, just work a lot of it. So we do have some bits that are showing up that are not here yet. So some of the profiling's not yet been done, but we do have all the cabling and stuff. So after we get the trunk done, we'll probably dive into cabling, doing all of our sound treatment in here and uh, just keep on rolling, man. It's a pretty fun project. So we're happy to be running through it. So thank you guys for sticking with us here. Uh, we are going to wrap it up for today and get jamming on in the morning. I know video wise, it doesn't really make a difference to you guys. It all just kind of rolls together, but uh, believe it or not, I am human. I do go home. So um, we're going to wrap this one up here and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys up in the morning. What's up? What's up? All right, guys. So got a good chunk we're going to get through today. Um, kind of where we left off last time we went over everything with you today we're going to build these front panels um, the trim out the front We've got some router bits showing up today so we'll get the rest of this profiled um, and then we'll really start to see some shape so we'll start with these that should give us the pieces to do the top pieces here and get the side trimmed out um, and we'll see how much further we go with this uh, we do have a little bit left to do but um see what we'll, see what we get into right so uh, let's go ahead and get jamming
these are the these are pretty important but before we go trimming these flush on here we want to make sure that this piece which we just templated here this is going to be our little plug so what we're going to do is we've already gapped this for vinyl so we have a 3 16th gap or i'm sorry we have a 16th inch gap so now what we're going to do is we're going to lock it in behind the pvc here i don't know how much of this you can see but let's see if we can get you back here Basically we did, we built it like a, it's like a right angle. It's just gonna lock around the PVC and you can kind of see our gap right here. So our 16th of an inch for our two pieces of vinyl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up stacking those to make our curvature around the backside of the panel there. Uh, so it's quite a few pieces, but it's just the best way for us to attain this shape. And then it keeps it lightweight. You know what I mean? We, we tend to put PVC where it's appropriate. We build with wood where that's appropriate. Um, a happy combination of the both is kind of what brings these together. Unfortunately, you can't just do it all out of one or the other. You know, PVC's got some really good water resistant characteristics. However, you don't want to overbuild with PVC because it has a tendency to be more susceptible to warping and heat and such. So you want to make sure that it's backed and structured if you are going to use it. So that's why we're very conscientious about where it gets used through the build. So if it's going to be used in spots where there's a lot of moisture, then obviously it makes the most sense. Um, and in those circumstances, you know, we'd back it with like an ABS or like a harder plastic that's not necessarily so susceptible to warping uh, or just not so temperature sensitive, if you would, right? So, um, but essentially this piece here, uh, we're going to go ahead, we're going to run this up. And as we stack these one at a time, we are going to shape it back behind the edge here um, just because it's not straight there, obviously. So every single piece we're going to kind of contour back. When that's all done, we'll go ahead and body work that all as one piece. Uh, make sure this piece is appropriate. We then cut our lip and then after we get that lip trimmed up um, We may potentially start looking at the top caps here So we'll have the curvature at that point and at that we'll go ahead and trim that decide what we're gonna do up here in the front um, Just to hide that seam and then we're gonna start to get all this transition together So again, that's gonna have a chamfer out probably a 60 degree chamfer that'll come down to maybe a piece of half or a piece of three-quarter and then this whole side, again, we're going to stack out of that PVC, uh, just being one of the easier materials to machine. And then, again, should it take any water, it's there. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and get rolling. We're going to, we've got quite a few of these to do. So we're going to go into super fast YouTube mode on these. And uh, yeah, go ahead and get jamming on these sides.
Welcome back from the world of super fast YouTube mode. We uh, got quite a bit of this stuff taken care of. So we got our side panels all stacked, roughly shaped in how we want them. We did mark out our windows for the side pieces here. And so as it sits, we almost have a complete trunk here. So we've got a couple more pieces to wrap up and we'll be moving forward. But um, the pieces we're gonna work on today are actually gonna be the caps. Um, it's gonna... <laughs> Whoa, excuse me. Um, so we're gonna work on the caps today and that'll be our final piece before this is actually all gonna come out. There is still a little bit of detail work that we need to do with this, but um, it's gonna be far enough along that we can get some panels out, get some things wrapped, and then the couple little things that we'll need to satisfy moving forward, we can kind of address as we go through it. You know, the caps we were kind of on the fence about, I had mentioned it previously, um, they may roll into some other panels we're gonna be fabricating on the sides of the seats. So we're gonna loosely mock these up, but um, just kind of see where we end up going with them. Uh, I do wanna get them built because I think it's gonna add another cool little element to the back here, and that way we'll get to see a little more of where we're trying to be. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go cut some quarter inch MDF. Um, we're, we've taken some rough measurements here, so we're gonna go ahead and get some MDF laid up in there. We're gonna mark what we'd like to cut out. We're gonna get it all prepped and set up, and. Uh, Keep on keeping on, man. This trunk is really coming together, so we're really excited. So stay with us. I promise not too much longer here, and we'll have this thing ready to be removed and wrapped. So let's get it going. Um, so we did go ahead and do the top caps. We got those at least roughed in. Again, we only did them out of quarter just to template them. I don't know how we're gonna run the panels in front of it back into it. So the grill might overlap. So we didn't wanna go ahead and cut them out of the PVC yet. So at this point where we're at with this trunk, I mean, we still have the windows to cut out, a little bit of body work to do on the panels. But for the most part, the work that's gonna be inside the vehicle at, that, at this point is pretty much complete. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get this out. We'll do some work on the panels outside of the vehicles. Uh, we're gonna let Megan run on some other aspects of the build in the meantime, but um, what we'll do is we'll come back around when we have to do some matching and stuff like that. But basically, again, at this point, everything will come out. We'll get some of the panels upholstered and get back in, get their mounting done appropriately. And then, uh, yeah, we'll keep rolling, man. But at this point, uh, the mock-up is officially complete, so we're happy with that. So let's keep on moving and uh, on to the next spot. 